Now, one of the things you're really focused on is trying to extend human life. How much progress have you actually made there? Well, this sounds very mad scientist, <laughs> as if I have like a garage where I have like bubbling beakers, <laughs> and and it isn't so much about extend, extending life. It's sort of like if you set the goal, like we want to land on the moon, but you start by saying, but we can't land on the moon, well then you'll probably never get there. And so the idea of extend, extending life is more about can we live vigorous, healthy lives, get more life out of our years, uh, and more years out of life. In terms of the actual progress that you've made, what have you made? Wait, where are you? Yeah, I guess I would say, I don't make progress. We invest in companies that do the work. One level, we're making great progress. We're able to develop diagnostics now. Uh, so the Human Genome Project took 10 years and four or five billion dollars to sequence one genome. Now you can do that in an hour on a machine that fits on this table. Mm -hmm. um, now we can look at the genome and find places where we see errors. Well, the diagnostic comes first and the, the, the therapies come after that. Uh, and so now we're moving to a place where companies like Editas, a company we invested in, public company now, uh, can, uh, it's a CRISPR gene editing technology. And that may not mean something to a lot of people, but five years ago, the idea of that company was hard to fathom, that that could be a company. Mm -hmm. And I think things will move very quickly now, I hope so, uh, in a way that we'll have treatments to things that seemed untreatable before. So living to 100 is possible today? Oh, sure. What's, so what's the goal? If, so if you're going to say the moon, is it 200, is it 500? So the goal that I would put out there, I think is, I would put before that, is if you look around the world, or even San Francisco today, this area of the world, Silicon Valley, is great at disruption, innovation, invention, like words that are so overused that a lot of people get tired of hearing about them. The goal that I would set out doesn't have to do with those words. It has to do with distribution. Mm -hmm. The fact that, uh, that in this country, if you're a, a white male, your average ex life expectancy is like maybe 77 or something mm -hmm. like that. If you live in Western Africa, your life expectancy is like 45 or 50. And so for me, the challenge I would put out is about distribution of our existing technologies, which we can do today. Like the seven deadliest diseases, many of those we can cure right now or we can treat or prevent. And the fact that we're not making as much of an effort to do that, if, if I told you we could double lifespans in this country, like by snapping our fingers, you would say, well, we should do that. Mm -hmm. well, we could double lifespan in lots of parts of the world, even in this country, just by distributing what we already have. So let's take Alzheimer's, for example. There have been 100 attempts to develop an Alzheimer's treatment since 1998, and all of them have failed. Right. Um, at the same time, a successful treatment could be huge. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the breakthrough happening in age-related age disease? There are people who are spending their entire careers uh, uh, um, moving actual molecules and, uh, and working in labs to develop treatments for something that has been untreatable. Uh, and that'll be a win for humanity when that happens. We have an understanding of how Alzheimer's uh, develops and how all neurodegenerative uh, conditions come about that, that 15, 20 years ago, when I was a neuroscience student, just, it didn't exist, it wasn't even in the books. And now we have tools to peer inside even living brains. I mean, it was only 1930 that we had no antibiotics. Mm -hmm. You get a disease, you die. And then suddenly you get a disease and you take a pill and you live. Well, that's like kind of a miracle. I want to talk some about some specific companies, like found Foundation Medicine, which is a company you guys backed working on a personalized cancer treatment. They've been slow to get insurers to cover it. Some say there's still no viable product. What are the chances of Foundation actually finding the cure for cancer? Well, Foundation's goal, uh, when we invested, it was, when we invested, they came into pitch, and after the pitch, we all looked at each other and thought, is this even possible? Like, does the, is, is, will the technology get there? So what they're doing now was impossible at the time that they founded the company and were raising money. So the progress that they've made to date is so remarkable that it's, it's completely un, underappreciated uh, by uh, a lot of people, maybe even um, the market. Uh, they created a diagnostic to genotype tumors so that they could help physicians pick the best treatment modalities so that, if you, so that we're treating your cancer. And if we all live long enough, we will all get cancer. We can treat your cancer, not 
what was the gold standard for this generic form of what we call lung cancer because it happens to be in your lungs. Uh, that's a huge step. Um, and will that lead to a cure? I mean, they say, well, there is a cure for cancer. It's early detection. And so, uh, so the, it is a big step. And I will tell you, there are patients alive who would not be alive but for the foundation medicine test. Really? And that's really compelling. 